jail. I just remember waking up in jail and then I had a, a sheet or a charge sheet in front of me that said no bond is to be granted attempted murder on law enforcement officer on these charges. So I'm like, this is this is punishable by life in prison. This is punishable by life in prison. I in this video, I'm going to share my story, my story with you guys, because I want to help and I want to reach as many people as possible. And I do that. I try to do that with Neville Goddard's teachings. And I talk about my grandfather and what he's manifested and what I've manifested. But I want to talk about what created the version of myself and the concept of myself that I am now. Because the things that I had to go through in order to learn really how to properly manifest and not just manifest in vain, I had to go through a series of things and trials and tribulations in my younger life. And they're probably going to shock you because the things that I had to go through, because as a young man, when I was when I was growing up, my grand, my father was an alcoholic. So that's all I that's all I knew. So when I was growing up, my dad was giving me beer. He was saying that that's that's what you should be doing is drinking and not going to school. So I ended up dropping out of high school and just partying and drinking and doing all of these these things I wasn't supposed to be doing because I didn't have any direction. OK, so as I grew into my 20s from my teens, I continued to drink drink and I continue to do all these things, even though my grandfather came to me and taught me how to manifest, I was still using it in vain because my concept of myself, I was never trained to think properly. Even though I was trained to manifest that you can visualize and you can affirm things and make things happen in your world. But what I noticed was the things that I was creating were just being taken from me or they weren't making me happy. It was just a temporary happiness because I didn't have happiness within me. You have to find happiness within you before you're going to you're gonna live the life that you want to live because before you get to this concept of self, you're going to be trying to manifest these things and to make yourself happy. And, and you're always going to be searching for the next thing. It didn't matter what I had or how much money I had. I was always trying to get the next thing. And when I got it, I wasn't happy. And then I got the next thing. I wasn't, wasn't happy. I was a miserable person in my life. And I was always drinking. And I always needed these outside substances to make me happy. But they weren't really making me happy. It was the illusion of happiness that I was chasing. It was the illusion of happiness that I was chasing and I wasn't my true self. I wasn't my real self then. I wasn't even consciously aware of anything that I'm consciously aware of now. And where that took me, my life just was a series of downfalls. It was a constant struggle to the point where I wanted to kill myself. I didn't even want to live anymore. It didn't matter what I had, you know, whether I had trucks, I had houses, I had boats. I mean, all of these things that I owned, all these possessions meant nothing to me. They didn't make me happy. It was always getting to the next thing and manifesting the next thing, but it never made me happy because I never changed my concept of myself. I never changed the version of myself to be somebody that was integral, that didn't need outside sources to make me happy. And I was always searching in vain. And ultimately what happened was I lost everything. Like everything just came tumbling down in my life. I continued to drink and I continued to spiral downward. Didn't matter what I was manifesting, they would just be gone. Something would happen. If I tried to manifest this, something would happen that would take it away. Or I'll try to manifest this and something would come in and just change all that and wreck me completely. And then I would, then I would be drinking more. And then I just spiraled down to the point where I was drinking so much that I was that I was actually drinking to get drunk at that point where I was drinking to actually just to, I was passing out drunk from how much that I was drinking and it led me to a situation I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie The Hangover where they actually well they get roofied in the movie but they black out I actually had one of those nights where I was where I went out to party and I was drinking I was drinking so much that I blacked out and woke up in jail with charges in front of me like I was in jail and I woke up with like a charging sheet next to me that's all I remember I don't remember going through the with anything that was going on like getting booked into the jail I just remember waking up in jail and then I had a, a sheet or a charge sheet in front of me that said no bond is to be granted attempted murder on law enforcement officer on these charges so i'm like this is this is punishable by life in prison this is punishable by life in prison i woke up in jail with a charging sheet that said no bond is to be granted punishable by life so when i saw all this and i woke up and i sobered up and i started just taking everything in that was that was happening the realness 
of everything that's happening. So uh, automatically I'm thinking, okay, so I got to manifest my way out of this. How did this happen? What happened? I didn't even know what happened. I didn't know what was going on. I was like, okay, so I got to manifest my way out of this. So immediately what I did, my thinking was, I'm never going to drink again. The first thing I was that, that came into my mind was, I'll never drink again ever in my life. And this was this happened in 2010. Okay, so this was 2010. This happened, and I still haven't had a drink to this day, nor will I ever, nor have I had a desire to drink. But I made that decision in that moment when I woke up in jail. But then I realized I needed to manifest my way out of that. So I instantly started visualizing sleeping in my own house, just like Neville Goddard did. Started visualizing sleeping in my own house. And what this did was it caused me to take some action where I hired a, a, an attorney, and the attorney ended up getting everything dropped down the charges dropped down because it really wasn't the police officer really didn't get hurt in this situation is what happened was i got i was at a bar and i got in a fight with these bouncers i got into a really you know a heated uh fist fight with these bouncers and then when i was leaving the club apparently they they had to they had to drag me and put me in my truck and then when i left i crashed into a car on my way out of the parking lot and and there was a cop that was outside and he was like three cars down where the car that i crashed into he was like three cars down and then it was like an accordion effect it knocked him on his back i don't know where they got attempted murder from that but that's what happened or that's allegedly what happened and then i immediately left the scene after i crashed into the car then there was a, allegedly a high speed pursuit and then i was pulled over and then i was arrested at that point so then I continued to manifest my way out of being in jail because I didn't have a bond at first. Then I got the bond down to about a quarter of a million dollars. Then I bonded out of jail and then I was sleeping in my own home. But I, but I made a decision right then and there. I made that decision right then and there that I was never going to drink again because that experience itself, I mean, there were times before that where I was like, oh, I'm never going to drink again. I'm never going to drink again. But it was never serious enough to where I was really gonna say or really commit to never drinking again, like never ever drink again. That's what needed to happen in order to change this concept of myself. So all of these things happened for a reason because my true self was a good person. My true self, which is God, was a true and real person and I wasn't living a good life. I was not a good person. I wasn't doing the right things. I was living a selfish life. So my higher self can see all these things happening and it knew what my potential was and the service that I could provide to the world. So it created this event to happen to me in order to change. So I would actually put my foot down and actually change myself and restructure my mind. But this is just the beginning of the changes that I was going to make. So because these charges were still pending. So I'm out, I'm out on bond. I pay to get out on bond and I'm living back in my house. I'm doing all the regular things anymore. I'm not drinking. I quit drinking. But I still had this issue with myself where I needed outside substances to make me happy. I was miserable. I got out and I still wasn't happy. All of these things were still happening to me because I didn't make the changes yet. I'm just still manifesting in vain. I'm manifesting getting out of jail. I'm manifesting getting this amount of money or I'm manifesting doing this. I'm manifesting getting my charges dropped. All of these things I'm doing but it's just, it's not changing my concept of myself. So I even go see a doctor. I go see a, a, a psychiatrist. I'm like, okay, so I quit drinking and I'm just, I'm just not happy. And I just, I can't focus, you know, my mind's going everywhere. What can you do to help me? So they prescribe me Adderall and Klonopin. And so I start taking Adderall, which is like a, a pharmaceutical methamphetamine and Klonopin, which is like a lower form of Xanax that just puts you out. It just numbs you, your anxiety. You're just like a zombie when you're on this stuff. So I needed that. So I started taking that in my mind because my concept of myself needed outside sources all the time. I was trained to look on the outside for my happiness. So I'm constantly reaching for things. So I go through this process for years, fighting my case, trying to manifest my way out of this, but I was so numb from everything and I just wasn't happy. I was, I was back to the point where I was before when all this was happening and I was even abusing the medications now where I was just going completely numb and I just, I didn't even want to live anymore. I wasn't even happy. So I was like, screw trying to manifest my way out of this. You know, maybe this can help me. Maybe this is something that I need to do, but I was still fighting it. I was still kind of unsure, but I didn't even really want to live anymore. So I went to trial, lost trial, and the judge sentenced me to 15 years. 
And I remember the way that I felt as soon as I was, the judge said that, you know, being sentenced to 15 years, Department of Corrections. I remember the feeling. It wasn't, I wasn't sad. It was almost relief. I was in, the stress was gone. I let go of everything in that moment, like all the chains that were attached to me from all of these things in my life, everything I was worried about, stressed about losing this, losing that, losing, I was, I was just covered with chains and they were all broken in that instant. As soon as I was sentenced, I could just let it all go. I let it all go. And at that moment, I was happier than I had ever been in my life. So at this point, I'm not even thinking about manifesting my way out of prison. Even though I did get out early, I didn't do 15 years in prison. I did eight and a half years in prison total. But what I wanted to do, because you know, the way my father was when I was growing up, you know, he wanted, he didn't care that I went to school, so I just dropped out of high school, you know, and I didn't have an education. I went back to school, you know. When I went to prison, that's what I was focusing on. I wanted to focus on meditation. The first, one of the very first things I did was ordered and had sent in all of Neville Goddard's books, Joseph Murphy, Charles Hannell, you know, um, Dr. Wayne Dyer. I had all these books that were just sent in, and I meditated. I I exercised. I worked out. You know, I did actually did 365 days straight of of meditation, you know, as many hours all day long as I possibly could, and I even kept a note in my pocket to where I, if somebody tried to talk to me, I would hand them the note and the note said I'm fasting from speaking nothing personal. And I would hand that to people that are trying to talk to me, you know, cuz everyone thought I was kind of crazy because I was always meditating. So everyone would kind of feared me. You know, I'm a big guy too, so I'm 6 foot 4, 250 pounds, you know, so Really, people didn't mess with me all that much. I mean, I went to a, a one prison that was pretty bad. But people in prison generally won't mess with a guy that's six foot four, 250, that meditates all day long and uh, at night sitting on his bed in a full lotus position for hours just meditating with his eyes closed. Usually, you know, they, they look up to that or they look at that as like uh, you're kind of like an alien to them. So they usually just don't mess with you, especially if, you, if all day long, as soon as the rec yard opens, you're going to work out. But what I did, my main focus was to get my mind right. I wanted to develop the muscle of my mind because I, I got to the point where I couldn't even focus on, I couldn't even read, you know, to the point where I was, it was so bad where I couldn't even read. I, and before that, I never really picked a book up. You know, my grandfather taught me the techniques, but I, I never really sat down and really read a book. So that's what I wanted to do. And I remember the first book I picked up, Neville Goddard's it's actually some of the first um, videos that I that I posted on the channel were actually those actual books that I was in prison with and I actually it was uh, the law and the promise is what the first book I think I was reading all the testimonials and everything I and I would read a paragraph and I wouldn't remember anything because my mind was constantly trying to find it was always going it was always needing this dopamine 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 from dr whatever substance alcohol drugs that the pharmacists were giving me the the psychiatrists were giving me so my mind was trained to need dopamine from the from an outside source i didn't have it within me i couldn't i didn't have any happiness or dopamine from within me i needed everything from the external world so i had to redirect that. i kept going back i'd read a paragraph over and over and over for an entire day until I until I, I gathered my mind and I was able to focus again. I was able to focus. And then I went back to school. I got a bunch of degrees. I got my culinary arts degree. I got my marine tech service degree. I, I became a certified paralegal. I was a certified law clerk. I got my certificates in industrial wastewater from the California State University. I was in the cuffs and collars program when I was actually training dogs. That was actually pretty interesting to where, I, you know, the whole thing was just getting away from the the exterior world the 3d world everything i was used to everything that was distracting me in my 3d world that was that where i couldn't gather my attention so what this did was it took my attention i was able to take my attention back and focus it inwardly and just with meditation and doing the leaf exercise all the exercises that i share with you on this channel are the same exercises i did for so many years in prison and that where i got my attention back i got my ability to actually really manifest anything that I want and I wanted to develop that ability to be able to focus on one thing without my mind being distracted because it doesn't matter what you have in your 3d world if you can't focus your attention 
on one thing, then none of that stuff's going to make you happy. Nothing in your world, even if you were a billionaire, none of that stuff is going to make you happy. None of it is going to be real unless you can focus and you have your happiness is gathered from within you. No matter what you have on your 3D world, you're happy. And it was actually one thing my grandfather told me because I was I was going through the whole you know, pre-trial things with my grandfather. I was actually able to spend a lot of time with him like that year right before I went to prison was the year I made the videos of him and everything. But he told me, he says, if you could learn to be happy in jail or in prison, you could learn to be happy anywhere. And I didn't really understand that then, but it took me many years after that to really understand that. Because if you can hit that rock bottom, you can have everything taken from you and then learn how to be happy with nothing, then you have found true happiness. And then anything outside of that, anything outside of that to, that you get is going to be 10,000 times better. Once you hit that rock bottom and you can learn to be happy at the bottom, Everything you get, you're going to be grateful for. Every, uh, every small thing, you know, something good to eat, a steak to eat, something, because when you're in prison, you, you're not eating good. The food is not good whatsoever. The boxes that are in there actually say not for human consumption. And you're eating all these things that, you know, they, they don't taste good. None of it tastes good. But after being in prison for eight and a half years, every day I wake up now, every day that I wake up now is like Christmas morning. I feel like a kid and Christmas morning. That's why I'm able to accomplish everything, anything that I want now, because everything is from within me. I have happiness within me, and the little things make me happy. I wake up, even if I didn't have anything right now, even if everything was taken from me again, I would still be happy. And that, But that's why I have all of these things. That's what changed the, the concept of myself now, where I don't have an attachment to money. I don't have an attachment to material things. All of those things have disappeared because I changed my concept of self in prison. I did a lot of visualization, seeing myself as a successful person and having a, a specific amount of money. And it was actually one of the exercises that I did. And this was before I even went to prison. This is when I was spending a lot of time with my grandfather. And this is when he went over, you know, the $3 million exercise where you actually fall asleep imagining that you have the $3 million, you're on the ship and you're being congratulated by your family members being a multimillionaire. That was actually one of the exercises I kept doing as I was falling asleep, even though I didn't have focus in my mind. But that itself, I wasn't visualizing getting out of my charges. I wasn't visualizing dropping the charges, getting out of the prison sentence. I was going to the end. I went to the end and I created a version of myself that was a multimillionaire. And then I allowed everything to happen that needed to happen in order for me to sustain that kind of wealth. And what happened was I went to prison. I went to prison for eight and a half years. I got educated. I learned how to be happy. I learned how to manage myself, my mind, learn how to focus my mind, manage my mind, be grateful, learn all the different exercises, the leaf exercise, learn to focus my mind on one thing and develop myself into the version and the concept of myself that can sustain that kind of wealth. So these things, I went to the end and allowed everything to happen. And it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And I'm not suggesting that everyone needs to go to prison in order to do this. Why I am sharing this story is, I could have done something differently long before this, but I was so far off drinking for so long ever since I was 13 14 years old you know my my father was giving me alcohol I was drinking alcohol all these things were happening in my life and I just spiraled out of control into my 20s so my concept of myself was never developed at all I wasn't a great person even though I learned how to do how to manifest money and relationships and all these things I never fixed me I never fixed my concept of myself so I was always having bad relationships the worst relationships you could imagine. These things, I was attracting these things because that's who I was. So I was attracting the same sort of people into my life that I was, and I no longer wanted to do that. I no longer wanted to live that life anymore where things were being taken from me, all these things, and my world was me pushed out. I needed to transfer to a different parallel reality. I needed to change my concept of myself so that way I can sustain the reality that I wanted to live in, and that was changing my foundational concept of myself but we can all do this you can do this now most of everyone on my channel that have been following me 
that actually are doing the exercises, you are developing yourself now. You're doing the things now that I did in prison. But in prison, you don't have social media. You don't have, you know, there's a TV room, but, you know, I never went in there. Hardly ever went in there, you know, where there's a little tiny TV on the wall, but you can't hear anything. You got 100 people in there, 50 people. It's basically like a dopamine detox. I went through like eight and a half years of dopamine detox. But actually towards the end, they actually did start, they gave us tablets where you could actually buy movies on it. Like they got these little tablets towards the end where you can actually pay for movies and, and get music and things like that. But the first six years I was in prison, it, there was a, it was a complete dopamine detox. My main joy in life was meditating, working out my physical body, and working out my mind. Developing my mind, developing my body, and, and meditating. Just doing all of these things, and focusing on myself within, and changing my concept of myself. Learning how to visualize properly, you know, even affirmations and things like that. Just focusing, and I also ran like different experiments while I was in prison where I can, I'll, I'll get more into that. I know this video is getting pretty long right now, but I want to break all this down more for you guys. I have a lot more, you know, that I want to share about this, situ but I wanted to tell my story and I want to get this out, you know, because this video is already about 20 minutes, but I want to share more details and I'll keep breaking this more, down more. And you guys can leave me anything in the column box below in the comments any part of this you want me to expound on, you know, specifically, you can ask, you know, I'll read all of the comments and I'll make more videos on it. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to break all this down like individual. I'm just kind of giving like a brief summary of everything right now. But I'll break everything down way uh, a lot more as I go about this story and every little detail about everything that happened, you know, and what changed me and how you guys can, you know, develop yourselves now the same way that I did in there. You don't need to go through that. Changing your concept of yourself, developing the muscle of the mind to be able to focus on one thing. And there was times in my life before I even went where I thought I did have control of my mind, but I really didn't. I really didn't have control. It, it took a lot for me to gather that control, to be able to focus on that one thing, like doing the leaf exercise. I mean, I did that. It, it took me six months to get to 50 leaves without my mind drifting. And it took like 60 days just to get to, to 10, I think, you know, my first time doing it. And that was after meditating for a little while where I, where I found that, that book where it actually got into that exercise, you know, so developing my mind, you know, being able to focus on one thing, now I can accomplish anything, you know, so I haven't been out of prison long at all. And I've only been out of prison for, for about a year now. But I'm going to get into more of this. I want to break this down a lot more about my, my story and how I can help everyone accomplish this much faster. And a lot of it was the dopamine detox and just the meditation and doing the exercises and being consistent with it. And just breaking free from your outside world, you know, the 3D world, detaching, getting away from your 3D world and focusing internally that when you gather that control when you can be grateful for everything in your life and be happy with yourself no matter what you will be able to manifest any life that you want automatically you won't even have to visualize that much because your life when you get yourself into the concept the proper concept of yourself you're going to automatically manifest the life that you want without doing anything you're going to everything's just going to fall in your lap the way that it's supposed to naturally when you can develop yourself to this level and that's what i want to teach everyone how to do and i want to reach millions of people to help you, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't drink ever or anything like that. I personally just had a an alcohol problem where I where I was getting drunk and I was abusing it, abusing, you know, even drugs at that point, the pharmaceutical drugs. I was abusing these things. I mean, that's what I'm saying not to do. I'm not saying to have a beer once a month or something like that. That's bad. I'm just saying do not abuse substances or abuse anything in your 3D world. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. And I'm going to go deeper into this and leave any comments that you want me to see, want me to read, want me to expound on. Leave those in the comments box below. And I love you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.